Hey everyone, I'm in New York, our office is upstairs, and I didn't bring my laptop, so how am I gonna get any work done? Well, let's try the Galaxy S8 plugged into the deck stock. Gives me this desktop interface with my phone, so let's see how much work I can do. So I'm here in our satellite office, and so let's see how well I can work with the Galaxy S8 if I don't have a laptop. And that's all thanks to the deck stock from Samsung here. Let's unplug this for a second so you can take a look. This is the dock. It slides out by pushing this right there. That's a USB-C so you can plug in the Galaxy S8. This is actually a cooling fan to keep your phone cool while you're working. And at the back here, you can see that there's two USB type A ports, an ethernet port for faster internet, an HDMI port for your monitor, and a USB-C port to actually charge your device while you're working. Let's plug that back in. This is the charger to charge your phone. HDMI, and we actually have two uh, uh, wireless devices here. This is plugged in to keep the keyboard charged for now, but uh, that's the benefit too, since you're using a phone, you can totally just connect Bluetooth devices like Bluetooth speakers uh, or, or a wireless mouse to the phone and still use it. So again, let's start plugging it in and see how that works. So this is how you do it. Give it a few seconds. It usually takes a little under 10 seconds. And right there you can see on the monitor, the DEX logo just pops up. So we can use this interface right here. Um, and you can see that initial lock screen was uh, using my traditional pattern on my phone. But we can actually go ahead and try using a fingerprint sensor to unlock your phone. The fingerprint sensor is located on the back here. And as you can see, just quickly unlocked. This is the standard interface of the DeX uh, dock system. Uh, this is the desktop Android interface that Samsung uh, has made. Uh, it looks pretty traditional, like a normal Windows or Chromebook sort of type desktop. You have uh, little navigation icons here. These are your apps. This is the Recents menu. And as you can see, it has this desktop suited uh, styled dis design. And over here is the home button, so if I'm in an app, for example, uh, I can press home and it'll sort of take me back to this desktop. And over here on the right is all of our notifications. You can press this to condense this, but here you can see all the notifications you have on your phone, and you can even respond to stuff directly uh, when you get a notification up here. And these are your standard uh, you know, system tray icons like Bluetooth, and you can again connect this stuff from here like you would on a traditional desktop, Wi-Fi, battery, date, time, things like that. So it's pretty standard. And over here you can see a few Samsung apps that Samsung has uh, put on the home screen. I added this Lightroom app, which is also uh, an optimized app for desktop. So that's actually a, a, a cool thing and an issue with the deck stock is that you have to have optimized apps for this interface because let's take a look when you use an app that's not optimized. For example, the Facebook app, which a lot of people use, is not really optimized. As you can see, it sort of comes up in this uh, phone-like interface where it's, it's a weird window and you can't resize it or anything. You can just move this around and uh, that's kind of it. You just have to, you're forced to use it with this sort of interface. Um, on, the, on the other side, you can just go to the web and this is Samsung Internet, which has been optimized for this interface. But as you can see, the, you can just always use Samsung Internet to go to facebook.com uh, and, and use a lot of the apps that you might use, you might want to just go ahead with the web version because uh, they just work a lot better, uh, especially if they're unsupported. And so let's take another look at a few other unsupported apps. Um, Instagram, for example, that'll also open up in this little strange phone-like format. But now let's look, take a look at what a supported app looks like. Um, for example, Let's go back to the home screen. For example, let's take a look at Gallery. This is Samsung's photo gallery app. 
Now, a few differences is that it opens up in a much bigger uh, interface and you can expand it fully. But the big feature that you can tell uh, when, when it's optimized is that you can resize the windows, which means that you can sort of work how you want to uh, with multiple windows and you can resize this the way you want. And another big feature that you know when something's optimized is right click. Right click is supported in optimized apps. So again here, I can delete stuff just by right clicking like you would on traditional desktops. And again, let's go to Facebook for example. And if I right click, nothing happens. So that's just one way again um, to know if something's optimized. But even if something's optimized, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get the best interface. Uh, Adobe Lightroom and a bunch of Microsoft apps are, are, are optimized for this interface. But for example, if you open Lightroom, it basically opens up, it is much bigger when it opens up and you can resize it. Uh, let's take a look at that actually. So here we can resize this as much as we want. But the problem is that it's more or less the blown up phone interface. So let's take this photo, for example. It's not similar really to the desktop interface for like the Windows Lightroom version, for example. It's workable, it's just not the best or fastest way that we are used to editing on a desktop mode. It's a great option to have, again, though, in case you need to quickly get some stuff out of the way if you're working in a different office and you forgot your laptop with Lightroom installed. Uh, this is a great way to quickly do some photo editing, but we, find a, we kind of find it hard to be able to work on something like this for a long period of time, editing a lot of photos. It's not the fastest thing to do. Uh, it's not the best, really, reliable way to do it. But again, it's a solid option that it exists. So a lot of our work is actually done on the Samsung Internet app because it's basically a browser and it's much better than uh, using apps to access certain functions. For example, the Trello app, which is a content management system we use, uh, if we open the app right here, you can see that it shows up. You can even move things into landscape mode, which makes a little more sense. But again, this is not optimized, so we can't expand it or anything. So this interface is very limited in what we can do. Uh, it, I mean, it works, obviously, as you can see here. And uh, we can move stuff around. It's just, again, uh, not the best way to do work. So we would much prefer to just go ahead and use the Trello website. Uh, which, again, offers the exact same functionality as you can find on any other desktop browser. If you take a look, all of our sites show up in a full desktop format, not a mobile format. Uh, we found that when using Chrome, it wasn't necessarily optimized as well, so you, sometimes it would show up the mobile site. Um, we would have to change it manually a lot. Uh, and the good thing is that you also get uh, a way to save your passwords for sites. For example, if we go to Amazon, I have my Amazon password saved and it says, look here to use irises. And it doesn't work again. So it's not working right now, but it has worked before. And you can also use the option to use facial recognition or your fingerprint sensor to uh, type in your password. So basically it's like Chrome's autofill, uh, where it's uh, the Chrome or the browser saves your uh, passwords for a site. So instead of having to type things out, you can just basically use your iris, for example, to log into a site or to put your finger on the back or your face. There's a lot of options. You don't even have to use it if you don't want to, but it's nice that it's there and it's also nicer when it works. So a lot of my work is actually done on Google Docs and you can also use Microsoft Word uh, because a lot of Microsoft apps are supported with this DEX format. Uh, but for example, um, this is much better than using the Google Docs app because the Google Docs app isn't really supported uh, and you have lots more features to access from the web version anyway. So as you can see, let's see, uh, this is the DEX doc video. Typing is, you know, as pretty natural as it comes to any other uh, type of platform. You have the same types of uh, keyboard functions like copy paste and you can as you can see I'm copying and pasting and uh, there are some things that don't work like traditional uh, keyboards like control A is supposed to select all that doesn't seem to work uh, again most of the functions that we typically perform on using uh, you know typing on desktops typically uh, 
we haven't really have an issue with the deck stock. It's been pretty uh, accurate and, and doing well for us. Notifications come over here on the right side and you can actually press reply or delete depending on the app and interact with them and that opens the Android app up so you can you know, further finish what you will wanted to write. So I've been using it for uh, about two weeks or so and I found that it actually is pretty workable. Um, it's, I've gotten, I've edited reviews and I've written stuff on it and it seems to perform fairly well. Uh, I would not want to use it as a personal device for uh, a long period of time. I really prefer it to be a work device. Uh, so I don't really recommend if you're sort of, you know, maybe if you have a Galaxy S8 already and, and you have a monitor and stuff at home, it may be worth the buy. Uh, but it doesn't make sense as an interface for uh, home use. We think it's great for when you're traveling to another office and you don't really want to bring that laptop. Uh, throw your phone on there and you can get some work done without having to, again, bring your laptop. The price is $150 for the dock, which is actually not that bad. Uh, the problem is that you have to use the Galaxy S8. So if you don't have one already, is it really worth buying this um, just for this type of desktop setup? Uh, we think you might be better off just buying a cheaper Chromebook or a cheaper Windows tab laptop so you can uh, do a lot more really with it. But if you have a Galaxy S8, then sure, and this is something that you do. You travel to different offices and uh, you have a dock and monitor set up at your workplaces that you can just easily plug your phone in and continue working. Sure, uh, saves you the trouble of bringing a laptop. So uh, definitely do that if you have a Galaxy S8. Not really sure if it's uh, really worth getting a Galaxy S8 just for this specific type of setup, unless it's something that you're really interested in.